The time lapses were from 2014. For a more recent overview, I included a list of the most polluted cities from IQ Air. The list reports the average particulate matter 2.5 concentrations in micrograms per cubic meter for 2019 by month in 2019 and where available for 2018 and 2017. We see that most of the top 10 is composed of cities from India and Pakistan and where available 2019 values are often lower than 2017 or 2018 values. The declining trend in PM 2.5 air pollution is more pronounced for five of the Chinese cities that were included in the time lapse. Some of these observations do seem in line with this idea of an environmental Kuznets curve. So is it really the case that economic growth is the friend of the environment? Does the environmental Kuznets curve withstand more thorough empirical scrutiny? Shafiq and Banjo Patyai, 92, studied 10 different pollutants. From these 10 pollutants, only two air, pollutant, two air pollutants showed a path that seemed in line with the environmental Kuznets curve. Sulfur dioxide and suspended particles, both pollutants of local air quality with effects on human health. Two pollutants decreased continuously with income, urban sanitation and water pollution, and two others increased continuously with income, carbon emissions and municipal waste. While the remaining four pollutants showed paths that were unrelated to income. This study reminds us that not all pollutants are alike. It also illustrates a first tricky aspect of the environmental Kuznets curve, namely the continuously decreasing and continuously increasing impacts with growing incomes can both be consistent with the environmental Kuznets curve, as it is possible that we find ourselves before or after the turning point of impact. Apart from the possibility that we find ourselves on different parts of the environmental Kuznets curve for different pollutants, there are other difficulties to keep in mind when evaluating the environmental Kuznets curve literature. Perhaps most importantly is that suggestive evidence in favor of an environmental Kuznets curve from cross-country comparisons can easily be the result of a competing race to the bottom or pollution haven hypothesis that high income countries export their polluting activities to low income regions. Put differently, Arrow et al. reminds us that the observation of an inverse U relationships between pollution and income could easily be the result of trade rather than a reduction through policy or technological development. This figure by Suri and Chapman shows how imports and exports of manufactured goods have grown or decreased from the early 70s to the late 80s. The idea here is that manufacturing is often one of the more polluting industries and we see that exports of manufactured goods have increased disproportionately in countries with lower average incomes such as Thailand, Malaysia, Brazil and Mexico. In talking about the effects of economic growth on inequality or of income growth on the environment, it can be tempting to talk about rich and poor countries for simplicity or for expressing something quickly. So I thought it would be a good idea to include a fragment from a speech by Michael Parenti at the University of Colorado Boulder in 1986 on poor countries. <laughs> 